Welcome back to Effort Over Everything Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Kleep, and on today's episode, Gabe Yanez and I, we're talking about present, focus, and efficient workouts, particularly the role that social media plays on pulling us away from our workout when maybe we should be leaning into it. Gabe talks about a new book that he's reading called Comfort Crisis and Lessons Learned there, and we start off the podcast really discussing double unders, in particular, how I'm working on getting Ava her next double under. You know, some people, they can get their first one, or maybe they get their first jump, but then they can't get the second one. And what's holding you back? Talk a little bit about technique on what I'm working with Ava. Hopefully that helps you if you're struggling with the jump rope in particular. But the main topic, or something I was really proud of that we discussed today, is these weekly emails. We put out the EOE Weekly every week from NC Fit that has so much valuable content. Talking about hydration, sleep, recovery, fitness, you name it. We dive into different subjects every week. Gabe and the team do an incredible job. So if you're not on our weekly newsletters, you gotta check out the podcast show notes. Make sure to jump in. It's completely free, tons of value, and they put so much time into it that you definitely don't wanna miss these out. We also have bi-weekly gym owner newsletters that you definitely wanna check out if you're a gym owner. Without any further ado, let's dive into a great episode Gabe on us. We talk about a bunch of cool stuff today. Sit back, get in your workout, go on your drive, whatever you got going on, and enjoy this one. Let's get it. Recording in progress. So you asked, what do you want to talk about? There's a few things that are on my mind. One thing that I want to start with, which is more fitness based, is uh, jump roping. And then obviously we talked briefly about the fall flex off. If you're watching this on video, you see that I'm rocking my new uh, fall flex off shirt. Pretty cool design that we came up with here at NC Fit. And uh, got a couple other things on my mind that we could discuss. Yeah. Let's do it. What's on your mind with jump roping? So I was trying to teach Ava how to jump rope this morning. And it's an area that we don't really work on very much. So this morning I had her do a 10 minute uh, strength cycle. So the way that I incorporate some strength for her is I, I always do it on a clock just to kind of keep her inspired. So I did five back squats at 45 pounds, get her comfortable underneath the bar, which is not something we normally do because uh, she's kind of like, she doesn't like having a bar on her back naturally, but I, I taught her how to like walk into it, blah, blah, blah. Boom, five back squats, five assisted uh, chest to bar pull-ups to the band to work like kind of like the lower lat and to work the arm strength, which is an area obviously of improvement that she could have. You know, a, a lot of people I feel like don't have the upper body strength to pull themselves up. So I want to start incorporating it low key, five, five. And then it was um, five really good burpees. So five like solid burpees, nothing crazy. And then it was 30 seconds or 20 seconds, excuse me, of jump rope practice. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is I think for anybody who's struggling with jump ropes, and I get this question a lot and they say, how do you get better at jump roping? And the answer is always, well, practice three times a week for five minutes. But in this case, I think it's a good way to incorporate it in your workout. So it's five back squat, five pull-ups, five burpees, and then 20 seconds of jump rope practice. And we don't work jump roping very much. And it's something I got to work on. But one of the things I recognize that she says to me, she goes, I wrote this down. I can never get another one. And one of the reasons why I think she could never get another one is because she was using her arms and slamming it into the ground, which makes it impossible to get a second rep. And so the, the, the cue or something to think about for anybody listening, who's struggling with double unders or jumping rope in general, and we weren't even working double unders, we were just working regular jump ropes is to think about your wrist and not your arms. Cause as soon as you utilize your arms to create the momentum, you drive that jump rope right into the floor. And when it grows into the floor, it's really hard to do a second rep because you're kind of like slamming the jump rope into the ground and it can't keep this kind of like cyclical motion. So that's the tip of the day for jump ropes. Add in your workouts, whether it's 20, 30 seconds of practice, whether it's five minutes a day, three times a week. But if you are going to do it, utilize your wrist to create the rotation, not your arms. Your arms are not really doing much at all. You know, I, <clears throat> I, I really miss coaching. Um, you know, un un unfortunately out here, there isn't like a really want to find a collective gym. And the one that does use our programming is a little bit too far. I actually tried to work it out. Um, but j teaching the jump rope, teaching double unders is, was one of my favorite things when I was doing coaching regularly, because it's such to everyone, like sometimes you know, like the overhead squats or like the more complex lifts or gymnastic movements, like you even have them like hang from the pull-up bar to maybe teach them a kipping pull-up. Or some people just don't have the mobility to get overhead. So you even teaching them those skills, 
But the cool thing about teaching people jump rope and the double unders, everyone can pick up a jump rope and the coaching you're teaching, you can have the entire room, regardless of where they're at with that specific skill, practice it. And it's really cool when it clicks to see like, you know, people like really appreciate the fact that something that is usually super so easy for them. Um, I used to have a lot of success teaching the, the, the jump rope and the double under similar to cues, cues to what you people, you know, especially in our space, CrossFit functional fitness, so strong. They're so like, you know, when they run, when they jump rope, like everything they're trying to like power through everything. And, you know, the jump rope requires a lot of finesse and it's actually a movement that, you know, if you can workout it could almost serve as like a built-in rest like if you see some of the best athletes on you know at, at the games or the best out of your workouts they look so relaxed on the on the double unders right like it's literally just a hop the actual movement of the rope is is like that you know once it clicks it can it can almost become built in rest in in, in your workouts yeah i mean oh i agree that's one of the reasons why i went from a like a really fast rpm jump rope to the as rx jump ropes a little bit thicker just to kind of give me a little bit more forearm pump and a little bit more of like that burn but yeah once you get really good at double unders with a thin rope the speed i mean it's it's just really and the best way to think about a jump rope in double unders is to think about it like you're holding a pencil that's the way i think about it so you're not death gripping it you're kind of holding it like a pencil so you can get rotation in the wrist that's been really helpful for me uh, in particular on double unders and i think the biggest thing to your point is like when you talk about getting better at a clean or talking better at pure strength, it takes a long time. People can get better at jump ropes literally overnight. They can come in, they can practice, they could then not have it. The next day they can come in and get it. And just that neurological connecting the brain with the body, it's a big win. So anyways, it's one of the things I'll be working on with Ava here in the near future. I'm pretty excited about. I, I saw, speaking of like learning things, I saw a video. Um, it was a YouTube short. Uh, man, YouTube shorts can get super addictive, man. You can get stuck in that scroll. But um, it was an Andrew Huberman video of learning things. And I, I don't want to misquote him, but essentially he was saying that like back in the day, people would immediately followed by like throwing them in a cold river. And this is like back, back in the day when like people were absolute savages. But he was talking about in response after being introduced to a new skill or piece of information like locks things into memory. That's the reason why people usually remember like high adrenaline experiences. Like you remember that very clearly. So he was relating it to the cold plunge and relating it to like, you know, if you need to learn something, if you're studying for a test or whatever, and you're really trying to like learn this skill, there's something super powerful about like learning it, practicing it, and then getting into the cold plunge immediately after, because there's something about the adrenaline response after learning something that like locks those things into memory. Those really? hormones are super powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cool. I love Andrew Huberman because also everything he speaks to is like backed by like really, really sound science. But I thought the anecdote of like, you know, they used to teach kids something and then throw them in the cold river was also pretty funny. Yeah, and, and nowadays you'd be sued and shunned for life for, for oh, anything like yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No. You know, it's funny. I was talking to the kids about dodgeball and it's like, I don't know if they're going to be, I mean, anyways, like, uh, yeah, not, I don't know if there's much dodgeball going on in typically in schools right now. I saw the video and sent it to Ariel, my wife. And then um, I was like, guess we're throwing our kid into the river. She was like, what? I was like, no, I'm joking. But it was an interesting video. Dude. Yeah, man. So anyways, for anybody trying the double enters, uh, whatnot, that's just a, a tip of the day, right? Something I was working on this morning. I thought it carried over really well. Um, you know, I, I did want to talk obviously about this sheepdog thing coming up, but one of the things I wanted to say is I just want to give a shout out to the members here at NC fit. You know, I know you were out here for a competition and you said that quite a few people came up to you and said, they listened to the podcast. So just want to say thank you to everybody in the Bay area in particular, who's listening to the podcast, checking out what Gabe and I have to say, you know, it means a lot that you guys take the time to listen. And if there's ever anything we could do to add, you know, additional value, let your coaches know questions you might have that we could touch base on here on the podcast. Um, but that must've felt good. You know, obviously when you're out here and talking to members here in Mountain View. Yeah, man. I mean, Campbell, Mountain View, both places, you know, whenever I come back, people reference the podcast. 
Um, had a couple members come up to me and like ask me nutrition questions in person, which I like love. Like, please, if you're a member at either of our gyms and you know you, you have a question and see me in person, like I love love chatting about that stuff. Um, honestly, you can even hit me up on Instagram, and and I I love kind of going into that stuff. But to Jason's point. Let the coaches know, let Jason know when you see him. And if we can answer some of that stuff live here on the podcast, obviously also a great way to delve into those questions. But yeah, man, I love that people listen. Yeah, no, for sure. So it's a, you know, look, we got a cool week coming up. So today we're recording this on um, what the, today's Thursday, October 20th. This will be released next week, right? Um, tomorrow I fly out to Omaha. Uh, Nebraska, we are actually uh, having a grand opening of one of our NC Fit partner gyms. And what that really is, is our representation of like a license model, but a little bit different. We have some branding guidelines, we have some things they need to follow, but their opening, um, their grand opening is on Saturday. So, so far, their business is doing really well. We're scheduled to have 50 people come for the 10 a.m. class. So that should be, um, that should be interesting. You know, I, I told the guys, I was on the phone with them. I think I might have, I don't know if this is a good idea or a bad idea. I was like, look, guys, try and get as many people in the door as possible. I don't care if it's 10, 20, or 100. We'll figure it out. That's what I said. And uh, I might be eating my words next week when we get on the podcast again because 50 people in their space is going to be tight. So we might have to go outdoors and do something. But um, hey, they get free waffles after the class. So nobody should be upset about the experience. You'll figure it out, man. I've seen you. I've seen you coach some big groups, and and it always ends up working out. You do a really good job in in those scenarios. I'm surprised you didn't say Omaha, Nebraska, with your Omaha accent. Oh, oh, dude, my Omaha accent is terrible. <laughs> I I think I I think I know what to expect when I go out to no Nebraska. I think I know, but I have no idea. I've never been out there. All I know is that I have connecting flights from California, and I have connecting flights on the way back, and I'm going out there for literally one class and turning around. So mm. it'll be a good day. Uh, and then when I get back, actually, we're hosting our annual blood drive. So, you know, any gym owners and coaches listening, really good idea for members. We could talk about more about this next week after the event, but we've hosted um, blood drives here sometimes twice a year, every year for the last at least six years, maybe even more since uh, Ava was diagnosed with leukemia. And uh, I'm telling you, they're, they're great community builders. They're great just initiatives to show the community that you're about something and they're a nice way for the members to just connect each other. So, you know, as soon as I get back coaching a class in the morning, actually here, and then having a blood drive. So it's going to be a good day here at NC fit. If you live in California, uh, well, this is going to release next week, but stay tuned for next year. <laughs> you know, I think it's, it's, it's going to be really cool next week to talk about, I'm not going to be there for the blood drive this Saturday, but just like a, a comparison of both events and like, they both serve the purpose of community building, which is great, but I think it does it in two such different ways that really shows the value of having honestly both, right? Like one is going to attract like the more competitive, like maybe younger audience. They're going to come like vibes and energy is going to be great, but it's like a very different, you know, kind of atmosphere than now something that's, you know, super accessible to all your members, you know, lets people come in, feel like they're contributing to something bigger, which they are um, probably more time to like connect with members. Like if you usually come in the morning and in the afternoon, cause in the competition, you know, you're coming in, you're either competing and then your, your day is pretty much like ex it's exhaustively focused on that. Or you're coming in, you're cheering for your specific friends, you're hanging out with them between events. I think that the blood drive, because I've been obviously when we've hosted them in the past, you know, it's more low key. You're spending time at the table after you donate. You're usually like, you know, around people that maybe you don't talk to. It gives you a chance to maybe have some deeper conversation and really get to know some people. So super different events. I think they're both they're great, which is why we do both. Right? Yeah. Um, and, and it's going to be interesting to kind of like recap or debrief after both um to see what we could do better for both in the future but also like it'd be interesting to share what the pros and cons are for each um, yeah specifically the pros because i think there's a lot more pros to cons but you know how maybe the different nuances um can be used to like attract a very different audience yeah and it just so happens they're going back to back weekends right that's not normal um you know we went we went one weekend at one of our gyms we hosted a competition which you know had 100 competitors probably about another had, had spectators and volunteers it's about 200 people it was a good throwdown that was just local internal just nc fit members and then the following weekend we're having the blood drive which is not just for um you know nc fit members it's for anybody and it could be for um you know 
so the way we did the blood drive and, and just so we could kind of clarify this for gym owners who are interested is that we connect with the local, um, for lack of a better term, blood bank, it's, it's Stanford, uh, it's St Stanford blood center, which is like a local blood center, but you can go through red cross. You can go through whoever you want. And basically you reach out to me, say, Hey, I have a network of healthy people who I believe will hit your characteristics that you need. Um, and I have a space and a gym is a great space for blood drives. It's open. And in general, it's pretty clean, like open, clean space. And when they come in, they'll set up their you know stations, they'll bring the nurses and they turn key that bad boy. All you have to do is promote it. But the reason why it's such a, it's such a great component for a gym is that um, first off, they have you do a questionnaire, which is pretty outdated. And, and that's a kind of a, an, another thing, but when you actually get ready to donate blood, they, you have to pass a height and weight ratio. So they look at your BMI and if you don't pass, you can't donate. And then uh, too little, I mean, so like in general, um, over too high, I don't know about that, but too little is a factor. And then they test your hemoglobin um, where they do a blood prick and they test your um, your hemoglobin in your, in your blood. And if you don't pass that, then you can't donate as well. And so typically they see less people in our blood drives in the past, they see that more people statistically go through the vetting process than in general blood drives. And I think it's because they live healthy lifestyles, et cetera. So if you're a gym owner, it's definitely a, a something to consider. Drop yeah. Slide. Definitely. Um, definitely a good event. Good idea. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to talk about big guy? I had a couple topics. I know we didn't specifically ask for questions this week around, but, um, what else was on your mind? You said uh, you had a one, lot of one, things to talk about. No, one more thing. One more thing. One more thing. Okay. So we got Omaha trip, blood drive. Oh, and then the following week, uh, Rogue Invitational. So, you know, look, we've been, dude, it's been pretty, uh, that's why one of the reasons I love sharing, like, dude, I, I've had a pretty active, like last little bit, like with the substance customs and border protection, going out to Texas, going out to Texas again. Uh, here we are now. Uh, we got the, had the competition last weekend. Omaha blood drive. And then next weekend going out to Texas again, uh, for the rogue invitational. But I, and then, uh, like a week or two later, I'm going back to Texas for, uh, finally got confirmed. I will be taking the sheepdog, uh, protector one course. And then after that recording some, um, you know, additional content, but I'm really excited to do the course that you took, uh, months ago. I know yours is a little bit different because it was like a co-ed kind of like Valentine's Day thing. Uh, mine will be like the traditional three-day, uh, you know, uh, training in self, -aware, you know, uh, awareness, uh, self-defense, etc. So I just got the the email a minute ago that I was able to get accepted in that. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. So my understanding, it's exactly the same course. It's just the participants when I went were all couples. It was oh, okay. exclusively right. couples, but it, it was the same course. Um, yeah, I'm excited to hear how it goes, man. It, it's a cool time. Um, do you know if Tim is the one teaching it? He'll probably be there because you'll be there. Oh, he's going to be there. Yeah. And so I'll, I'm sure we'll get some good video of him trying to like grapple with me with a knife, which I've never experienced that. So that'll be a really cool experience for me because obviously I've grappled. I've grappled with him. I've grappled with a lot of people, but I've never had to grapple and then worry about either getting punched I mean, yeah, I guess I've done some of that. So maybe not that I've never had to grapple and have to worry about like a gun or a knife. And so that'll be an interesting layer for this course. I've never had to worry about that before in particular, a knife, I, I guess a gun, you would probably go a different route if you were trying to defend yourself. But it, it, you know, if someone pulled out a knife and you're in a grappling event and they took you to the ground, how to defend yourself, I think would be really interesting. So I'm excited to, to learn more about that. Yeah. It's a cool course, man. Yeah. So that was a, that was all I got the jump rope thing, the, the members talking to us and uh, obviously the sheepdog excited about that. And uh, now it's just free flowing, whatever we want to talk about. It's funny. Cause we were about to hit record and you were like, I have so many things to talk about. Let's just start recording. And here we are. That was a quick list, man. That was three oh, things. Dude, it's just because I'm becoming a much more, you know, uh, uh, calculated uh -oh. in my old age, you know, I, I, I <laughs> Uh, but dude, I, I, we, our podcast space here is getting, we're, we're, we're close to finishing it up. And, um, so we'll have to have you when next time you come back, the, the podcast space will be complete. I know we recorded a podcast the other day, but it was like half complete with the, the background. So what are um, you, what are you changing to it? Is it just adding stuff to the background? 
Yeah, adding stuff to the background. Um, and then also I will be um and we'll be recording them better. Uh GoPro is super generous. They're sending me out this this cool camera so that people can have better angles on different things and just try to step up our podcast game. I feel like I, I love having different conversations with people, you know, get other people out here, get the Hinshaws, the Starrets, the the different groups. We have actually the knees over toes guy coming out here to do a seminar in February, which I'm pretty excited about. Just be able to record content and then come up here and podcast is the idea. Yeah, that's cool, man. Um, I know we usually plug stuff at the end, but one thing that I wanted to talk about was the EOE weekly newsletter. So the weekly newsletter that goes out to all our athletes. Forty um, percent open rate. What? What? No, is that what it is? God. Maybe yeah. higher. Yeah. Hey, that's a strong open rate, man. We should be proud of that. Yes. Yes. For sure. I mean, it's 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 been a lot of work to kind of really get consistent with them, and the team has done a great job at. You know, because I, I usually take lead on writing the copy, but, uh, you know, the emails are super easy to read, super interactive. They look great. And that's kind of a big hats off to the team. But, you know, one thing that's been cool is for the past, I guess we're on week six, we've been focusing on like breaking down a healthy habit every week. And I was looking at it this week, kind of thinking of like the next thing to write about. And the cool thing is, as I looked at like the topics that we've covered, you know, everything has been inspired or relates to something that like someone on our team is, is focusing on and doing. And I think it's really cool and worth bringing up how everyone on the NC fit team now, more so than in any other organization I've seen or worked for, or even in the past seems to be about what we're doing in some way, shape or form. And I think that that's really cool. And MDD actually brought this up, you know, he was in, at, at the competition this weekend as well. And, you know, as, as leader of, of, of kind of our, our coaching organization, our coaching team, you know, he was also super proud of just how like fit everyone is right now, like how, you know, how seriously everyone is taking, like really living what we're about. And I think that that's, that's super cool. You know, some of the um, topics that we've covered like, you know, how to stop late night snacking. Like that's a conversation I've had with MDD. And I know that he's working on that. That was inspiration for that one. You gave me the idea of like a cool down. Like you've been really focused on doing couch stretch after you work out. Couch that's been a, quad smashing, baby. Those two. That's, like that's been a big thing that like you've noticed that you can use a little bit of work on and you've been committing to it every single day. I know that you're doing that stuff and it's been really helpful. And that was the inspiration for week two. Um, week three, uh, just getting more steps in and how walking is really underestimated as like a really great, um, just fitness tool and thing to do. And MDV goes on two 20 minute walks every day. He takes his movement super seriously. I've been trying to go on a walk after lunch every single day is a good kind of like break and getting some movement in, you know, sometimes people, I think get so fixated on like extra, like movement being your workout and nothing else, right? Like as long as I go hard, whether I'm taking class or I'm following the NC Fit app from like three, two, one, go to the end of my workout, great, check. But then the rest of the day, it's like, well, I sit all day at work, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting, I'm traveling, I'm commuting. And they don't realize that just by getting a little bit of walking during the day can help, you know, really with like, whether you're trying to like lose fat, whether metabolic health is like a concern or just like injury prevention, right? Like making sure that your hips aren't getting super tight, leading to like back issues and stuff. Something that someone else on our team, Chris Detmering is, is super passionate about now coming back from, you know, being yeah. someone that was super active, then going into a engineering job, you know, behind a computer all day. Yeah. His body realizing, got wrecked, dude. He was yeah. telling me the stories about like how, like by him switching from like a physical career, like ours to a sedentary one, like literally he just, and he said he tried everything, Gabe. He said he tried like stand up desks. He tried whatever. I think he said it was because like, because he was coding, like legit coding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. So that's something that I know he's super passionate about. Um, you know, for week four, we talked about dealing with injuries and making sure that, you know, if you do happen to have an injury or a setback, continuing to move is so important. And that doesn't mean like push through the pain, like, Hey, pull-ups are really hurting my shoulders. I'm going to go and do pull-ups, but like making sure that you don't just like throw your hands up in the air because you have something going on and stop going to the gym or stop moving all together. There's always a way to find how to move 
around your injury and movement, just getting blood flow is such an important piece to actually helping that heal quicker. Um, and then the last, this last week, something that actually really relates to me is um, just kind of, uh, not this last week, this is going to come out on, on Monday. So it'll have come out by the time this podcast comes out. But like limiting screen time, I think is something that I've been like super, super um, kind of thinking about and trying to like work on myself. MDV made a joke in passing while we were working out together this weekend because we were both doing some stuff Sunday morning when you came late. And, um, you know, in between sets, you grab your phone and you're like on Instagram. And he was joking. He was like, you getting that thumb workout in between chest workout? And like, we laughed it off. But I, I, I think that it is something to recognize, especially now that like so much of my training isn't like three, two, one, go. And I'm like, you know, doing a workout, you know, from start to finish. It's so easy to between sets, like just pick up your phone and scroll through Instagram and like waste time. And so one thing that I did, cause I wrote about this is I looked at the screen time app oh, on my bro. phone. Yeah. But I set limits to certain apps. Like I set limits cause you can set a limit to like Instagram and specific apps. And it's cool because what it does is when you hit that limit and you try and open the app, like it pops up and it says you've hit the limit, you can still ignore it. But just that like extra step and that extra like, hey, I said I was going to do this for this amount of time a day and I'm over. Like if I really need to go on it for work or to check something, like I can do it on my computer, right? Like I'm not getting rid of like social media. I've done that in the past and I think it's a good exercise, but I think that this is like a really good way for me to just make sure that like I'm not doing too much of these things that ultimately aren't the best use of my time. Um, and I'm trying to like leave my phone down while I go train and make those sessions more efficient without just like falling into the phone matrix um, every single time. So anyway, well, super yeah. long-winded way of saying we've written about some super cool topics. They're all on the blog. So if you go to the NC Fit edit the blog, we'll link it in the show notes. You can find all of these different write-ups. They always talk about the topics and then give you like a thing that you can do to actually work on them. And if you want to continue to get the new ones as they come out, make sure you sign up for our EOE weekly newsletter. It's just been really cool that we're not pulling topics like out of the clouds to write about, you know, this is stuff that I know our team is working on in some way, shape or form. And that's where I draw inspiration to say, Hey, this is important. We're working on it here. Here's some information and here's something you can do to take this into your own routine. Well, chances are, if we're working on it, some, you know, other people are as well. And I think that's why you've seen the open rates be so successful is because people see that like, it's not just fluff and ads and all that kind of crap. It is actually like really value add content that's really curated and, and thought out. So, you know, kudos to you and the team. I, I did want to say, you know, it's interesting about the phone and like working out your thumbs because when I, you know, I started off at the conventional gym space and back then when I was like 15, 16, phones weren't as prevalent. I think, you know, I got my first Nokia phone when I was like, I want to say I was like a sophomore in high school. So that ages me, but I want to say I was like a sophomore and, but back then, dude, there was no smartphone. Like I remember the Palm pilot or something came out a couple of years later. And then obviously the iPhone came out and just smashed everybody, whatever. But you didn't have, first off, you didn't have social media and you didn't have like the ability to scroll the internet. So when you're at the gym and you were in between sets, typically you would end up like bullshitting with someone else in the gym, which I do think is good for like social interaction. Sure. You'd ask if they could spot you or you'd like walk around or something. But man, I bet you, the I, I'm actually really curious if they did a study compared to the legacy OG conventional gym versus today's OG conventional gym. Like same environment. I bet you sets are taking like 30% longer today than they 100%. were. I, I totally made that up, right? Dude. But I totally made that up. I just- But, but I, I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised. And the reason for it is that back in the day, in between your set, let's just say you're doing some buys and tries or whatever you were doing, right? Let's just say it's bench press and you hit your set of bench press after your bench, you kind of like put your new plates on, you know, you know, high five your homie, take a, you know, take a sip of water. And then you're like, what am I going to do? Right. What are you going to do? do the next set? <laughs> like you're just going to do the next set. But now it's like, you're in the conventional gym. And I use the conventional gym as an example, which I'll also talk about a traditional CrossFit gym too. But after you do your set, you're like, well, dude, I can't scroll. There's nothing to see. There's no TikTok. And so I'm just right back on my set. But now think about it. You hit your set and then you can just get like, your mind can like go into this other universe over here. Dude. 
thirty percent at least, dude. We gotta Maybe. do a we gotta do a study someday. Yeah, now I hit my set and I'm watching Andrew Huberman videos about throwing your kids into the river. But you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah I mean, no. oh, look, obviously, you know, it no, goes without true. saying it. It's I, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Because the, the the thing that I can share is, you know, throughout 2020 and into 2021, when Ariel and I were in the airstream, we spent a good amount of time going to global gyms. Like everywhere we would stop, we, we would usually do the like, we we would do the like, oh, we're thinking of moving here and like go to a gym. Oh yeah, like, they give us a week free, pass, oh, seven dude. day free trial. Oh yeah, oh, dude, yeah we yeah. had this. We had the script down pat. We were like, yeah, yeah like really thinking of like the area would love to check out the gym, like free week. Perfect. And then we'd only be there for a week. So anyway, we ended up going to a lot of gyms using that script, but yeah, I mean, dude, you look around at global gyms now and everyone is just on their phones. Like no one is obviously if they're doing a set, they're not, but other than that, like also people, at least from what I remember, like me and Ariel were the only ones that like were like, quote unquote, like working out together. Like most people were like, it's you and your phone and you're doing your workout. That's yeah. it. And look, I mean, some of those people are obviously listening to music, listening to podcasts or doing their own thing. And the fact they're in the gym is like huge. I'm just saying coming from my background, I remember that when I was down there, like you'd hit your set and like, I'd almost have to like tell myself like, oh, I need to rest two or three minutes or whatever it was because I would just like get antsy and want to just go back and do it. Versus like at the time I was thinking, oh, I need to let my muscles recover, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, when you fast forward, when I found CrossFit and even in our gyms today, right, you look at like when the three, two, one go hits, like people are just rocking it and they're am wrapping it. They're emoming it. They're, they're, they're going for time and they're not getting distracted by, um, by phones, which I think is nice. And I think, you know, same thing applies to jujitsu. And, uh, one of the reasons why I love both, you know, going into our gyms and taking classes. I love taking classes at our gym because I just listen to the instructor. Whatever the instructor tells me to do, I go do it. That's the warm up. That's the et cetera, et cetera. Dude, I got to get these lights fixed in here. You know that, Gabe? <laughs> For an, anyone that isn't watching the video, Jason is in an office at the Campbell gym where every now and then the motion sensor for the office is outside the office, which doesn't make much sense. So the light will go off every now and then. And Jason has to step outside to drive me nuts. I'm, I'm getting this <laughs> fixed. This is not a big lift and I just haven't taken care of it. But that's what I was saying. That's one of the reasons why I love taking classes. You know, if you find yourself, you're at home and you're, you know, getting a little bit just, you know, kind of mundane, just whatever. Right. Um, come into a gym, go find yourself a gym, go find a community, go find a class. I mean, I get no better workouts than when I go into our classes and I hit it hard. And I do that regularly, including also jiu-jitsu as well, right? You That environment just kind of sets me up for success. It's, you know, I think, you know, obviously at home, you can still train and work out, but I think it allows you to stay present and focused more when you're surrounded by a group of like-minded individuals who are getting after it. It's it's easy not to get distracted. That's just my yeah. take on it. Present, focused, and efficient, right? Like Present, focused, and efficient you know, how no one at a global gym, honestly, me included the way I'm training now is going to in 60 minutes, like warm up effectively, hit a strength session, hit a workout, and sometimes even do like a finisher or a cool down, like without a coach, like leading you through a timeline. I mean, unless you're like very, very on top of it, very hard to do. It is super hard to do. And, and, and it's not for everybody, right? Like, meaning like if you want to go into the gym and you want to spend a couple hours there and that's your time to like recharge, refresh, you do you. But as far as like you, what you said, being present, focused, and efficient, there's no better way than going into a group uh, because that group kind of pulls you along and the coach kind of gives you direction. Um, it, yeah. Anyways, I mean, obviously I, I'm preaching to the choir here. It's just something I do regularly. I love taking classes at our gyms. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm only halfway through it. So I'll, I'll, I'll share kind of once, once I'm done with it, but I'm halfway through um, The Comfort Crisis, the book mm -hmm. that Barry recommended um, to us. So Barry was someone that we met when we went to the Sheepdog office. Um, super cool guy, um, does a lot of Tim Kennedy's marketing. Um, and he recommended this book. And I, there's, I love getting book recommendations from people that are like crushing it in like some way, shape or form. Yeah. I think it's, it's one of the coolest things for people to like recommend a book. And I highly encourage that when you get book recommendations, especially from people that you're like, Hey, he's got something figured out, like take them up on it, read the book. Anyway. So I'm halfway through the comfort crisis. Really, really cool book, man. Really cool. I highly recommend it. 
whether people want to read it or listen to it. But he's he was just talking about, and it relates to this whole phone thing, how like we're incapable of like being bored now. Mm. And just how that's yeah, you're also, right. yeah, and how that's also a discomfort thing that we constantly comfort ourselves with, right? Like you can't go anywhere. The toilet, the sauna. I mean, dude, I am incredibly guilty of this. Like, yeah, I take I take my phone. Me too. I take my phone into the cold plunge. I take no. my phone, <laughs> dude. I do. And and like, and here's the thing. Like the excuse that I tell myself. Here's the excuse the timer. that I tell myself. No, no, no. It's not even the timer. It's so going back to Andrew Huberman, who I love. One of the things that he mentioned was that it's a good it's a good exercise to do to try and like think and solve puzzles while in the cold plunge. Because what it does is it like trains you to be able to like stay like level headed and think critically while you're in this like state of panic. So what I do, and I've been doing this for a while, is I bring the phone with me and I solve the world of the day in the cold plunge. But like, do I really need my phone? Like in, in the cold, like a time that really should be like about like focus and like being present, like it's crazy, right? So the book has like made me self-aware of these things that I like, I have excuses for why I do it, but really it's just this inability to like not have something at all times, like not have a podcast, not have music, not have like Instagram open, not reading something. Like when was the last time you literally just sit there? It's crazy. You never do it. Never. So with the plunge, that's, that's an area that I, I intentionally do, right? But we're talking four or five minutes, but yes. I'll give you a great example of when you feel that. I know everybody listening is going to relate to this one. In an elevator, in, there is no better time than in an elevator. When you get in an elevator, and let's just say you're going up 20 floors. I was just in Vegas for the ADCC Jiu-Jitsu. And you just watch it. And as soon as people get in there, they get a little uncomfortable. And, and elevators oh. are already kind of like a little awkward or whatever. Like, you know, because you're like, anyways, whatever. And you just see people pull out their phone. They just can't just stand there and like can't. awkwardly like look it's at a- the wall or themselves. And I like, and part of me gets it, right? Like I'm, I definitely do that too. But it's funny how like, even if I was just on my phone for like an hour and I don't really want my phone, I'll get in the, I'll get in the elevator and be like, shit. Like, you know, I'll pull out my phone. But that's a good <laughs> example. So I got to check out that book, Comfort Crisis. The one that I just it's- purchased. Um, and then we, I want to go back to what we were talking about, but the one, the book that I just purchased, just so everybody know, was from Tom De, De Blas. I, I hope I'm pronouncing his last name right. He's a jujitsu guy. He just started doing some things on Instagram that like inspired me. And so I purchased his book because I wanted to learn more about his background. I've not started it. I haven't read it, but I did purchase it. Um, so I'm excited to dive into that on my trip to Omaha. I'll let you know how that goes. And then I'll also get into the comfort crisis. It, yeah, the comfort crisis is good because while it's talking about, you know, how all this comfort has has really put us in a bad position now, it's interlaced with like a real time story of him doing this crazy hunt in the Alaskan Arctic um, hunting caribou. So like it goes through like him there and it's super exciting. Like the story is crazy. And then he'll go back and like talk about some stuff. So because I know how some like you know, some of these like self-help, like kind of books can just kind of get a little bit dry. So the story interlaced, I think just makes it really, really exciting. But, and I'm, I, I hope I remember this correctly, but it was interesting because he was explaining how this like discomfort with being bored was actually like a, an evolutionary advantage for us. And it's so funny how so many of the things that have screwed us over now, like why we like super hyper palatable, like high calorie foods, you know, why we do all the things that we do that make us sick now were actually like huge advantages for us, like back in the day. And I love how he explained the boredom thing. He said, imagine that there were two cavemen and they were at like picking berries out of a bush. And the first caveman, he has the, like, he gets uncomfortable when he's bored. So he picks all the easy berries out of the bush, like the ones he can find easily But then he gets bored, doesn't like it, and moves on to the next bush and picks all the easy berries, moves on to the next bush. And so he's very efficient at his berry picking and he gets it done in like half the day and then he can go hunt and get some protein. The other caveman doesn't get uncomfortable when he's bored. So he's picking the berries, picks all the easy ones, but then he keeps picking. He like looks for like the last little berry. He spends so much time like emptying that first bush of berries because he doesn't get bored. 
and or doesn't get uncomfortable when he's bored. And so that makes him much less efficient. So he, at the end of the day, emptied a one bush of all its berries, but that's all his family has is like one bush full of berries. Whereas the other guy that did get bored and got uncomfortable when he was bored, he did all the low hanging fruit, moved on, low hanging fruit, moved on, was super efficient, had time to hunt, had protein. And that's why we've evolved to hate being bored because back in the day, it made us more efficient because if we were bored, we weren't being efficient with our time. And when we were hunter gatherers, you had to be super efficient with our time. That was the analogy he used. That was the analogy he used. Out of all the analogies I could think of, that's a very um I, I guess it makes sense. I mean, dude, there's a lot of hypotheticals here, right? Like you're assuming that these hunter gathers, but I, well, yeah, I get but, the theory. That I get the yeah, theory. The, the whole idea though is that back when we didn't have social media, back when we didn't have podcasts and all these things, like it was a real advantage to not, not want to be bored. just not want to just be twiddling your thumbs. Because yeah. if you're just twiddling your thumbs, like you're probably gonna die. That means well, that you're, you're not, not, you're not being productive. Exactly. That's a really, um, actually that makes total sense. Right. I mean, you know, I just got back from Africa and when you're in Africa and you're watching the, like the traditional tribal people live, like there's always something for them to do, like get water, do this, do that, build fire, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, so I could see how like evolutionary over time people have, there's, it's been a positive trait to not want to be bored because it encourages you to work, right? Like that's a positive trait in it. Yeah. It, it like, it, it makes you be efficient about hunt and gathering all your food. Cause that's literally what you had to do all day. You know, now you door dash your meal without doing anything more than like opening your phone. And then like, you're done, you have your food for the day. So then what do you do the rest of the day? You scroll on TikTok, Dude, speaking of door dash. So last night, my, one of my neighbors, he ordered in a, a rogue rig and bro, he ordered in the new monster. So I was telling him like, Hey, I have a, mo I have a monster light in my garage, which I think is like incredible. He ordered in the monster, dude, the bolts for that thing are ginormous. They're so big that they come with a specific, uh, wrench set that comes with it. Because if you just had like a traditional socket set, or if you just had a different traditional, uh, crescent wrench, like, I don't know if it would be big enough. These bolts for the monster rig, they're, uh, just i'm going off on a tangent here but he door dashed food for his family and it came and he forgot to door dash like the actual meal he only door dashed like a bean and cheese burrito and forgot about like the chicken dish that you wanted or whatever it was so then he re-door dashed and door dash i'm pretty efficient at building these like little rigs he he door dashed it from the moment i got there he was able to have two door dashers come in a time and it took me to build the rig which only took me like an hour that's how fast DoorDash is coming. Like he was able to order it, have it come, realize it was wrong, have a new order put in and actually arrive all within an hour. That's how efficient it, it, DoorDash has became. Yeah, man. I mean, that's the whole premise of this kind of book and really interesting idea is we've, we've chased convenience for so long that it's put us in this place where like we can't deal with anything that's inconvenient or challenging or in any way just not ideal. Right. And it's kind of led us to where we are now, which, you know, isn't the most ideal place, depending on who you ask. Yeah. You know, I'd be curious uh, about how that relates to relationships. You know, like, fortunately, I don't have to really, I mean, I do have to worry about that because I want to make sure my relationship is super strong with my wife. But I, I, I do wonder how that works with dating. You know, like in this day and age where swiping and scrolling and this and that and like uh, perfection. It's, it's tough because relationships are, are difficult and you got to kind of work through things. And anyways, that's a whole different tangent, but I do wonder what this modern era of dating looks like, um, versus, you know, like 50 years ago. Um, anyways, a whole different tangent for another day that I don't speak on because I have no relevance in that space. It is, it is really insane though, to think about, you know, just 30 years, how different, uh, everything would have been, including like going out of date. Like, can you imagine the fact that you had to be like, Hey, we'll meet here at this time. And like, that's it. Like, oh, hopefully dude. they'll be there. <laughs> Bro. I remember no, like when there's no when, texting, like, Hey, I might be late or Hey, I'm stuck in traffic. You also have to like know which restaurant you're going. You're not reading 500 reviews about the restaurant, like call in to make a reservation, I guess. Like, dude, 
It is crazy. And it's 30 years. Like that's not that long. Not not even. I mean, I remember specifically (laughs) where like when my mom would like go drop me off somewhere, uh, you know, she'd uh, like we had to at the time just like look at like a map or a phone book or whatever. And then and then MapQuest came around and like blew my mind. So it would like tell you directions on MapQuest. And then now you got GPS in your car. They'll take you anywhere you want. I use the GPS in my car, even if I know where I'm going. I GPS to our gym where I drive to every single day, mainly because I just want to see what the traffic patterns are like. So yeah, anyways, times have changed, man. But I'm going to read that book, Comfort Crisis. Uh, shout out to Barry for uh, that. And then the Tom uh, DeBlas, I'll let you know how that one goes. It should be a, should be a good one, I think. Yeah, it's so true that it it not you don't even have to go that far back. Like I went to college not long ago. Like it's been less than 10 years. And I remember my freshman year in college because all the freshmen on the swim team had like, you know, a role that you play. I remember my role every time that we went up to meet was I I was responsible of the map quest binder, like the binder that had the printouts of the map quest to the meet that we were going to. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was less than 10 years ago. And you literally had to like, print out like you know and it would say like in three miles like turn here and it was like a binder because it would be like multiple pages if we were going something far dude crazy a random fact about map quest i think you know this but there was actually um an assassination here in in like the bay area and they caught the guy because they found so this guy was hired by this other guy actually locally in town this guy was hired from southern california to come and kill this guy up here because there was like a feud going on well, the guy that was hired to come and kill the guy shot him in his driveway when he was getting in the newspaper. They caught the guy who was uh, the caught they caught the guy who shot the guy because he threw the map quest directions out the window, or somehow they found him, and it took directions from his home in L.A. all the way to this guy's house in San Jose. And so that's the way they caught the guy was because of these map quest directions. I thought that was a random fact about map quest. I, I heard that they caught like a really famous um, one of the really famous like serial killers. They caught him because of um, like a 23 and me test. Oh, I'm sure that's true. Did I'm you sure that? that's true. I, I don't know if I heard that. Well, I, no, I don't know if I heard that, but I'll have to look that one up, but I'm sure the 23 and me, I'm sure there's, there's something that goes on there. Cause all this blood work and stuff. Yeah. Cause they have like more people's DNA and it's not that he did a 23 and me test. I, I think I remember, I might be misremembering, but it was like, they had DNA samples, obviously of the person that had committed all this murders. And then they found like a very close match to someone that did a 23 and me test. So the person ended up being that person's father. Cause oh. they were like, they were like, clearly someone you're, it's not you, but it's someone you're related to based off the DNA is this person I think is what happened, but yeah, I, I remember reading ahead. You know, Caden reads these books about, um, they take like, uh, uh, battles like nine 11, like, uh, like, um, they, they talk about different wars and they talk about how they were started. So he was reading, a, a modern day, like military book on what September 11th was and what's transpired since. One thing I didn't know is that the CIA actually, and this is public information. I was in the book, at least, this is based on the book. The CIA went around and they um, they told the people of Afghanistan, or if it was either Afghanistan or I think it was Afghanistan, that they were giving them um, in, like um, immunization, like they were giving them like a, a vaccine. And they would vaccinate all these people. What they were really doing in addition to that process was gathering DNA. And what they were able to do then, it was to track down one of the terrorists because they were actually going out there and gathering all the DNA similar to like 23 and me. So anyways, that was from his book. Um, what is this? In a, this is in a children's book. It was in a children's book. Yeah. Kind so, of children's book is Caden reading. Dude. So Caden, you know, he's, <laughs> so Kaden, Jesus. You know, so, you know, these, these war books are actually really interesting. I mean, he's definitely more on like this side of interested in like, he, he's very interested in this type of thing, but these books are like, they, they tell the real story, but they do it in a way that's a little bit more kid friendly. Um, no, that's, that, that's cool, but it's funny. It's not, yeah. not your traditional kids, book. not my, no. Oh man. All right. Well, Hey dude, I'll head out to Austin next week. Uh, I'll be at the rogue invitational. I'm, um, I'm actually feeling, you know, last couple of days, it's funny. Last couple of weeks I was feeling funky. I went to urgent care two days ago. Cause I had this bulge on the back of my neck. 
And uh, they immediately gave me a CT scan and got my blood work done because they thought it was like a tumor in my neck. And uh, long story short, they put me on antibiotics and it wasn't a tumor in my neck, but they got me like really afraid that it could have been. Uh, they did everything like super fast. It was crazy. Anyways, I'm on antibiotics though. I feel great. And I'm looking forward to throwing down the Rogue Invitational next week. So yeah, it's been a crazy week, man. Oh man. What a way to finish. Yep. That's it. Um, all right. Well, Hey, everybody listening, make sure to check out the podcast show notes. Make sure to check out our previous episodes, all the Kafka Klippas, all the episodes I've done with Gabe, et cetera. Um, would really appreciate if you enjoy these episodes. Simple ask. Just go tell a friend. Just let a friend know, hey, man, I listen to this podcast. These dudes are fun to listen to as I'm training hard in the garage, as I'm training hard in the gym, or uh, whatever you got going on, driving to your work. So appreciate all you guys for listening. Gabe, any final uh, closing out remarks? No, just again, check out the NC Fit blog, the NC Fit edits on the website. Check out the field notes to sign up for the EOE weekly emails if you haven't. Um, taking a lot of pride in putting out some real valuable stuff there, some stuff that we're all working on here on the NC Fit team and that hopefully can help you guys. So check that out, share it with a friend, and yeah, that's it. All right, we'll keep getting after it. Talk to you guys next week.